So Canonical has officially released their latest long-term support version of Ubuntu. So let's check it out. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Josh from Keep It Techie. And today I want to cover uh, the latest release of Ubuntu, which is their long-term support version, dubbed named Jammy Jellyfish. And it looks like a cool release of Ubuntu, or at least the best one in a long time. And so I wanted to go on and do a quick review and walk you guys through how to install it, as well as the overall operating system. So let's hop over to the website so we can check it out right fast. All right, cool. So we are at Ubuntu.com. And as you can see, it's on the first page. It's basically Ubuntu 22.04 LTS released and available for download. And like I stated, the release name is Jammy Jellyfish. But let me just go ahead and show you guys how to download it right fast. All you have to do is hit get Ubuntu uh, and that'll take you to the actual download page and you can download it from here. Uh, you can also upgrade it as well. If you have uh, Ubuntu already installed, there is a command to actually do that. I might make a video showing people how to upgrade from 20.04 to 22.04. It's a simple command that you can run in the command line or in the software center that'll allow you to upgrade the operating system to the latest LTS. And I always recommend people use the LTSs. You can use those other releases, but the LTSs have the most support and software is thoroughly tested, you know, before added to the repository of your LTSs. On other releases, you'll tend to run into bugs every now and then. So I always tell people to check out the LTSs if they want to use it on their machine as their daily driver. But all we got to do is hit Ubuntu desktop, click on it, and that will download the latest version. All you have to do is hit the download button there and that'll download it for you. I already have it on my system, so I'm going to skip that step. But that's essentially all you have to do. And then the next step is to either write the ISO to a USB drive or CD if you still have one of those and then boot up the operating system so we can install. So let's hop over to my virtual machine so I can walk you guys through the install right fast. Okay, cool. So once you got it booted up, this is the first thing you'll gr be greeted once the system fully boots up from the live ISO. You can try I try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. It's similar to all other releases. They've been using this installer for a very long time. So if you've installed Ubuntu on past releases, then you probably got this. It's not that difficult, but let's just hit install. And then we can hit continue. And then this is the updates and other software. So you can uh, do a normal install. It comes with a web browser, utilities, office software, games, and media player. And then you can also do a minimal installation, which is web browser and basic utilities. And then there are some other options. You could download updates while installing Ubuntu. Uh, and that kind of saves time after the installation. So you don't have to do much, many updates. Once the system is fully up, it will just go through that process ahead of time. And once it boots up, you'll be good to go to actually use the system. Now there is an option to install third party software for graphics, uh, Wi-Fi hardware, and I recommend you could just go on and do it, but some of it is proprietary. So if you don't wanna use proprietary software, then you might wanna go in once you have it installed and install specific software that you need for whatever you're trying to use. But I just go on and uh, check it and hit continue because uh, it, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna delete this thing after the fact. Now, the next thing is setting up our hard disk. Now, as you can see, it says erase the disk and install Ubuntu. That's the first option. And that's the option I recommend you guys use uh, if you're new to using Ubuntu or any Linux distribution. They do have this option in here where you can just in erase the disk and install whatever operating system, or you can partition it yourself if you wanna go through that process. But I'm gonna just go through this process, but I also wanted to show you some of the advanced features of Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. Now, a while back, since they've been testing it, you know, uh, ZFS or Erase Disk and use ZFS has always been a beta or it's like a testing 
uh, so they didn't guarantee that it will work. Well, currently now they have it set up where that's been taken out of it and you can actually erase the disk and use uh, ZFS, which you could before, but it was it didn't guarantee that your system would be stable. That's why they had that kind of disclaimer in there. And then you can also use LVM, which is your logical volumes uh, that'll allow you to adjust the hard drive sizes uh, because they're logical at that point on that one full hard drive that you have. I don't have a need for that because I'm using a virtual machine. I have a small, you know, hard drive or a virtual hard drive for this system. I think it's like 35 gigabytes. Uh, that should be a more than enough, but it's not enough to be working with LVMs and all that stuff. You can, if you want to, especially if you're putting it on hardware and it's going to be a daily driver, that's beneficial because you can adjust the hard drive sizes, which is awesome. So let's go down and hit cancel there and hit install now. And that's pretty much it. It's going to walk us through our location uh, as well as user accounts uh, that we want to set up. And I'm just waiting for that to actually go through. And here we go. OK, so I'm on the West Coast. So it selected uh, Los Angeles for it. So that means it recognizes where I'm located based on my IP address and uh, the geolocation of the IP addresses. So it understood what IP address I was using. So just select based on your time zone, but let's hit continue. And then let's type in our account information and it's currently installing in the background. And then just set your um, system account or system name or host name, uh, which I'm gonna just do UB22. And then let's type in a super strong password. <laughs> and let's type that in twice. And then I never turn on login automatically because anybody can get into your system, especially if this is a system that you're planning on running on your hardware. That way, if your laptop is stolen, someone can't just get into your system. I always require a password to log into the actual system. And then also you can set this thing up on a domain uh, using an Active Directory. So that's you know, an awesome feature that they have as well. So if you're working on a Windows environment, you can connect to Active Directory using that. So let's go down here, continue, and it will go through the install. And as you can see, it was running in the background. That's why a lot of the time has passed because I'm recording and I'm gathering my thoughts as I go through this thing to make sure I don't miss saying something or explaining something to you guys but uh it's almost finished i'll actually be back when it actually finishes okay cool so the installation is complete but it took about five minutes or so and of course i'm running this on a server within a virtual machine so it's a little bit faster i would say than other systems but this is not that long of an install so it shouldn't take you long as well now let me go down and restart the system now and then we'll come up with the desktop environment and one thing i wanted to show you guys with while it's uh coming up uh i like the way they modernized the ubuntu logo a little bit uh it looks like they could have cut this off or chopped this off to make it you know square right here instead of making it tall like that but whatever i just like the way they redesigned it a little bit made it a little bit more cleaner the ubuntu um logo that's super dope and maybe I'm behind because I haven't seen Ubuntu because I don't use Ubuntu that often. I use another distribution, but the logo change is awesome. Okay, cool. So this is the login screen. Let's go down and try to log into this thing and see what happens. Um, press enter and there we go. All right. So hey, it booted up pretty quick and it has a little bit more configuration uh so this is connected to your online accounts if you have any so we could just skip that i'm not going to sign up for that and no i don't want to send any systems information because this is a virtual machine so it doesn't matter uh privacy i always turn it off and that's cool that it's actually turned off by default a lot of play a lot of uh other distributions they'll have it on and then you have to go in and physically turn it off so that's cool that they actually have it off so that asking you if you want to turn the location services on so let's hit next and then that's it it says you're ready to go so it's basically telling you you can open up software center and install all your software so let's go down and hit done 
and now we are at the ubuntu 20 22.04 lts desktop uh let's go on and uh make changes to our display settings uh that way you guys can see it a little better on your end uh once i get this thing uh edited and uploaded you guys will see it a whole lot better once i change it up like this so uh let's go down and close out our settings i'll go through that a little bit more so if you guys didn't know uh ubuntu 22.04 comes with gnome 42 which is the latest gnome desktop environment and one cool thing I wanted to show you guys, if you go into the settings, uh, and I'll cover everything everything else in a second, but I wanted to cover this for you guys. Uh, and I wish I hadn't closed out the settings a little earlier when I changed my resolution, but I wanted to show you guys under appearance, they do have the light and dark theme, which I thought was super cool. Um, and also the colors that you could put in there. So uh, you could put green, uh, you know, I, I kind of like that orange accent that's basically the accent colors uh, right there. So that's super cool that you can actually do. But under appearance, you can you can obviously go through, make changes to what everything looks like, like the desktop icons, you could change that to small, which I like to do. I actually like to make them small uh, and then position the new icons. Uh, bottom right is fine. Uh, show personal folder, which is that home folder that we got right there. Now you can auto hide the dock, which I thought was super cool. Uh, panel mode you can leave it like that uh, the dock extends to the screen edge you can actually turn that off if you want to but it's short uh, as you can see it, it's kind of short right there and you kind of have to to scroll down you can move that to a different position if you want to and I know a lot of people what I do or what I've done in the past I know a lot of people do the same but they'll drop their dock down to the bottom and you used to have to add extensions to do that uh, but that's super cool that they have that within here and like i said i'm not <laughs> i'm not a gnome user i haven't used gnome in a while so maybe it's been there for a little while uh but that's cool that it's added and that's the first thing that stuck out to me while playing around with it and one thing also i like to you know lower my icons uh, especially on a screen resolution like this, I would make my icons a little smaller. Uh, so that's how you change that option right there. You can make it, you know, to where the icons are a little bit smaller and therefore your dock is a little bit smaller. Um, and so you can also mess with the behavior of the dock, which I won't mess with, but it shows volumes and this, which is the disc, um, as well as include unmounted volumes and include network volumes and show the trash so uh, and that's the trash can right down there so you can make those changes there as well now i won't go through all the settings i'm just gonna highlight some of the new features so let's go down and close the settings but let's just cover a little bit more uh if this is your first time using ubuntu i just want to break down everything so you got your power buttons over here so if you hit that uh you got your your volume you got your network connections uh, this is your power settings so you can set the power settings on the system that'll get you back to the settings then like power power off and log out so that's pretty much everything there and then over here on the left hand side you got your activities and this will bring up the actual desktops uh, so if you have multiple desktops or multiple applications and you guys know that if you've used uh, these systems then you understand how it actually works, but you can open up another desktop uh, and let's open up another application, open up Libre Writer. Uh, that might take a little while to open up, but we'll go down and do it. But this is on one desktop and then you can click over here on activities and go back to your other desktop where your other application is at. Or you can click down here on the actual application. And I'm not sure some of them will move it to that current desktop or no, but it has it. Yeah, it ha it's on its own desktop. So and then also the smaller versions are up here so you can see what desktop you're on. But let's go down and close that off of there and then go back over here. And I really like the icon design of, you know, these folders. So that's super cool as well. That that looks super new, uh, different. You know, I really like the design that they are using. And one thing I've, I'm noticing while playing around with this thing, I mean, the UI is just beautiful you see how it has these curved edges on it and like i said i'm not sure if this was in previous versions of gnome i'm, I'm not sure but the, it's aesthetically 
pleasing you know what i'm saying the way everything actually looks it's got the curved icons uh the curved window managers so that's that's awesome you know what i'm saying like the windows are curved uh instead of less straight so this this ui change change that they've made on this latest version is awesome it just looks a whole lot cleaner okay so let's check out the kernel right fast so let's hit the start menu go to terminal and let's check this thing out right fast we can type u name uh dash sr and press enter and that'll pull up the kernel as you can see it comes with 5.15.0.25 generic so the 5.15 kernel is what's installed by default so that's good to go let's go down and close some of this stuff as well all right, so that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this distribution. Uh, if you're coming from the previous LTS, you'll see a lot more aesthetic changes. It's an awesome, you know, beautiful looking desktop environment with GNOME 42. You know, basically they customize it for you, Ubuntu. So it's it's awesome. I really like the way it actually looks. So I definitely want you guys to check it out. You know what I'm saying? But you'll see the difference if you come in from one of the, from the last LTS to this one. You'll see a big difference. You know what I'm saying? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, leave comments down in the comments below. And of course, keep it taking.